Before we get started, let's talk about what this video is and what this video is not. This is a video about Lloyd Evans, the most prolific ex-Jehovah's Witness content creator and activist. In addition to being the XJW with the largest channel on the platform, he is generally also the most respected. Over his decade plus of activism, he has produced numerous interviews, experiences, rebuttals. He has also been featured as a spokesperson for Jehovah's Witnesses in such documentaries as Leia Remini's Scientology and The Aftermath. Nobody can create content on the internet for 10 years without creating some sort of controversy along the way, but this most recent one is the most serious and consequential. I've been dragged kicking and screaming onto YouTube. I've had to curtail my break or interrupt my break out of necessity due to a massive invasion of my privacy. This video is not an attempt to defame Lloyd Evans, to deplatform or cancel him. I don't have any hot scoops. We're only going to be talking about information that is already available. This is not, contrary to my typical style, a video where I dunk on Lloyd Evans, make jokes about him. My detective test determined that was a lie. This video is not monetized for reasons that will become obvious later in the video. To put it simply, Lloyd Evans was recently accused by a former co-worker and frequent collaborator of improper behavior. Lloyd Evans then did a live stream in which he confirmed that all of the things in that allegation happened, more or less. But since then, since his confession of all of the things and his defense or explanation of all of the things, there have been a lot of other allegations, a lot of speculation, and a lot of false claims that have gotten mixed up with the true claims. This is an attempt to compile everything we know and separate that from everything we don't know and what we cannot know. This is a video in search of Brace for Cringe, the truth. Lloyd's defense and his defender's main defense seem to be, this is not anybody's business, this is between me and my family. And we're gonna get to that in a little bit. I think it's important to establish the facts before we address how true that is, but the reality is currently, even if it is nobody's business, it already is everybody's business because Lloyd did a live stream where he talked about all this business that he doesn't think is anybody's business and now everybody's talking about it and we all know about it in our brains and we can't unknow it we can't unhave opinions and we can't unprocess them so whether or not it should be anybody's business to begin with it is now and considering the nature of the allegations and the things he has affirmed he's done you know you'll have to decide for yourself whether or not this is something that needs to be talked about the reality is, if that was something you were worried about, you've probably just already turned off the video and commented that I shouldn't be talking about it already. This is also a video where I want to be very clear about my own biases, and when my own opinions pop up, I want to be clear to delineate those from fact. This is also not an announcement that this is suddenly going to become a drama channel where I talk about infighting in the XJW community. It turns out drama is a lot less fun when it involves people you know, and it's not about some random Gen Z makeup YouTuber who's like a gajillionaire. Am I a human? Am I a monster? Or am I something in between? I'm making this video because I think it's really important. Lloyd Evans is the most prolific, most popular, and for a lot of people, most meaningful XJW YouTuber. Lloyd is able to do his activism full time. He posts daily content. Because of that, the Lloyd Evans channel dominates the YouTube algorithm, and any Jehovah's Witness who's currently questioning their religion is most likely to find Lloyd when they are searching for the first time for answers. That was the case for me and many other people. So let me also add, this is not an attempt to undo all of the good that Lloyd has done over the years. He has unequivocally helped countless people in their transition from fully indoctrinated Jehovah's Witness who's just confused about what's happening to free and happy XJW slash apostate slash whatever kind of moniker you're comfortable using. Which means, currently, people who are questioning and wanting to look for the truth about their own religion for the first time are going to be doing searches, they're going to be coming across Lloyd's channel, and they're going to be coming across the drama, and they're going to want to know what's going on. And frankly, there is a lot of bad videos out there with bad information. And ideally, 
what you're watching will not be that. So let's lay out everything that we know, everything that for sure happened, and talk about why it happened, why it matters, and how we move on. And currently, as an ex Jehovah's Witness community, we are divided. And that sucks because we come from a religion that often divides people, a religion that often causes shunning, broken friendships, broken families. And the XJW community is, for me and for countless other people, their found family. This is the family that we create for ourselves after we lose our mom, our dad, our longtime friends. So when something like this comes along, it is a big deal. The XJW community is a niche within a niche within a niche. But when you're on a tiny island, every seismic shift feels like an interval. You get the bag and fumble it, I get the bag and flip it and tumble it. Straight off the lot, 300 cash, and the car came with a blood in it. Little mama the fat, and she got This all starts on January 31st, 2022 with Kim Silvio. Kim Silvio is a former collaborator of Lloyd Evans. They worked together for Lloyd's website slash YouTube series, JW Watch. JW Watch is generally about more critical investigative reporting. Lloyd's videos are typically like blog style, him talking to camera like I'm doing right now. But JW Watch is usually him and some other experts like Mark O'Donnell or former lawyer Kim Silvio talking about current Watchtower court cases or other legal proceedings, leaks, generally serious things with hard data to back it up. Another important thing in the timeline is that at the beginning of December, Lloyd announced on his channel that he would be taking a break from activism. I need two months away to reevaluate my life for the sake of my mental health. Basically, he was depressed, he needed to take some time off. And really, Lloyd had been going for 10 years strong without really taking much of a break, so everyone was basically like, yeah, that makes sense, you should definitely do that. On January 31st, 2022, surprisingly, Kim posts on the XJW subreddit a statement regarding Lloyd Evans. In this statement, to quote the succinct recap from the XJW subreddit, Kim Silvio revealed some allegations that Lloyd Evans had misrepresented the reasons for his break from activism, committed infidelity with sex workers, and implied malfeasance of funds. This message is no longer available on the subreddit, but we are going to read it now because Lloyd reacts to it later and we need to have all this information at hand. Kim posted, I write this statement in the interest of scrutiny, transparency, and truth. Knowledge can be a powerful thing. However, in this instance, knowledge has been a heavy weight that has taken time to consider. Sometimes a day comes when the good that someone does can start to be outweighed by the not so good. Behavior becomes toxic, hypocritical, suffocating, and controlling. Some weeks back, Lloyd openly and without warning notified me of his infidelity and engagement with prostitutes on a very regular basis over many years, amongst other matters, that don't need to be specifically mentioned. This was shortly before he notified the community that he would be taking a two-month break from activism to reevaluate my life for the sake of my mental health. This is not correct. Lloyd had been in Thailand, making use of the many different facilities, getting to know the locals and other tourists since shortly after Christmas, only returning to Croatia a few days ago. Lloyd subscribers, support team, and patrons are not being given the correct information. There are matters that he does not want the public to know about, wanting rather to maintain a facade that appeals to those concerned. To show his narcissistic behavior, deficit, regard for feelings of others, use of funding generated through his activism work to pay for prostitution, an industry known for the exploitation of women and minors, a solo non-mental health-related trip to Thailand, and failure to be honest in respect to the true reason for his absence would cause reproach to be brought upon his name and therefore must not be spoken about. It is hoped that this information will give you the same opportunity that Lloyd gives to all Jehovah's Witnesses about their religion, the truth. You are being deceived by this hypocritical, dishonest, and misogynistic man. Many times, Lloyd has shouted down other activists, members of our community for not agreeing with him, or as a result of him somehow convincing others that on every single occasion he is questioned, he is the victim. How many activists have stopped their efforts? How many people have been silenced? You would be shocked at how many people have left activism because of him. I have given great consideration as to whether I should disclose this information to the community, and I have considered a few factors. Would I want to know if I were a patron? Yes. Would I want to know if I were a subscriber? Yes. 
Would I want to know if I were recommending Lloyd for media opportunities? Yes. Would I want to know if I were considering entering into a joint activism project with him? Yes. And finally, can I live with myself knowing that each and every one of you are being lied to just like we all were as Jehovah's Witnesses? No. We will not accept it from the organization, therefore we cannot accept this type of behavior in our community. Let's stop there for now. Before we get into Lloyd's response, let's talk about Kim's statement on its own. The initial reaction from many, including myself at the time, was, why would you post this? Specifically, why would you, Kim Silvio, post this? And this was the overwhelming majority of the comments in the thread that she posted at the time. She since deleted her post, so we can't go back and look at that thread, but I was there. Source, trust me, bro. From what she's saying here, what we're seeing is infidelity with prostitutes over a long period of time. A man cheating on his wife. That is generally considered to be a pretty crappy thing to do. I would agree. Not good to cheat on your spouse one time, let alone many times over the years while lying about it and having said wife on your channel. That being said, a lot of people cheat on their spouses and what goes on in somebody's marriage really isn't necessarily anybody's business if it's not anything illegal. As far as we knew from this post, Lloyd and his wife had an open relationship and she knew that Lloyd was doing all this stuff. Kim also broadly characterizes sex work as something that is rife with oppression and manipulation and that's true, but it's also just kind of broadly negative about sex work and that's not super fair. We generally try and have more nuanced discussions surrounding sex work. There are XJWs who are now prominent sex workers. So, you know, to broadly dismiss him as having taken part in an oppressive industry when there are non-oppressive forms of sex work, also not super convincing in and of itself. She claimed that he did not go to Thailand for mental health reasons and instead went there for fun. And somebody can go on vacation for mental health reasons. Those things are not mutually exclusive. Kim calls him a misogynist, but in this post doesn't really back up what she means by this, which just implies that he's a misogynist for taking part in having sex with a prostitute, which is not misogynistic in and of itself. She also calls him out for repeatedly silencing other activists and gaslighting people. Again, no real evidence of this is thrown out in this initial post, so people kind of went, what are you talking about? I want to be very clear, this is not a video about why Kim is wrong. These are the reasons why people thought Kim was wrong and maybe still think she was wrong to this day after she initially posted this statement. The biggest criticism, though, was shouldn't this be coming from Lloyd's wife? Shouldn't this be coming from the aggrieved spouse and not from a disgruntled coworker? I have to admit this was also my thought process at the time. This may be crappy, but it's also not our business unless Lloyd's wife decides to make it our business. So what's the big deal? I thought at the time and do not currently. But Kim also very clearly lays out her intentions as to why she thought it was appropriate to post this. And I think her intentions make a lot of sense. Now, going by just this post and not by information we're going to learn later, I can see why these intentions might not be convincing for some people. The biggest thing that was a source of contention was, is it really her right to call out the way Lloyd is using his funds? People voluntarily subscribe to Patreon. Nobody's making them do it. And there's nothing in the Patreon bylaws that say, you have to use all of your patron funds to not sleep with prostitutes. The situation has become a lot more nuanced and complicated since then, hence the video. But I do think it's worth noting that at this point, the majority of the community, and let's specify what we mean here, the community that is on Reddit happened to read this post when it was still up and cared. All things said, this was a few thousand people. It really wasn't a huge splash in the ex-Jehovah's Witness community in general because most ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are not on Reddit and are not on Twitter. Lloyd has a hundred thousand subscribers, more than that even, and probably only a few hundred people commented 
on this thread before it was deleted. And I think that's important to say because at this point, people are generally not in Kim's corner and feel like, e, this is a little sketchy. I don't think that it's good that Lloyd did this, but it's none of our business. So if Lloyd, and this is my opinion, if Lloyd had simply after this, delivered a simple statement saying, yes, what Kim alleges is true, but this is a private matter between me and my family, and we would appreciate privacy at this time. I'm going to continue my break from activism and come at you in a few months. This whole thing probably would have disappeared. That is not what Lloyd decided to do. Lloyd decided to schedule a live stream to his YouTube channel a few hours after this was posted. I have a confession to make to you viewers. I really like bad YouTube apologies. I find bad apologies funny? I don't know what to tell you. I've told tales, false regales. I watch a lot of these. I have seen a lot of bad apologies in my life. This is the worst one of all time. I haven't raped anyone. I haven't committed any kind of sexual offense. I haven't covered up child abuse. I haven't arranged for families to be separated or shunned. I haven't murdered anyone. No seal cubs have been bludgeoned by my hand. No cats have been run over knowingly by me. Normally I would be afraid of poisoning the well by saying this before showing any of the stream, but I don't know of anybody that thought that this stream was a good idea, that it went well. Everyone's saying don't say anything else, don't say anything else. Apparently I have to. Lloyd's response was a disaster. For whatever reason, Lloyd decided not to pre-record something, but rather to do a live stream. This was a live stream that was contrary to his normal live streams, rife with technical difficulties. A trusted friend, then a trusted friend, Double voice, why is it, the audio still wrong? God, why is nothing working? Feedback issues. How do I even fix that? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? God. Can you hear me now? I'm gonna have to edit um, everything that I've just said for the last minute. I don't even wanna be doing this video and I'm having technical problems to think about. It's a video I don't want to make and uh, apparently the technical there are technical issues I need to be thinking about. It was like one of my videos. In this video, he claimed that those technical difficulties were being caused by saboteurs. People like Sim Kilvio. Kim Silvio and producer Bob were somehow interfering with the stream, turning off his camera. And if that sounds conspiratorial, it's because it 100% is. And it's a crazy thing to even think, let alone say multiple times during your live stream. I wonder if it's being tampered with because someone else has access to my stream yard. Someone else has access to my stream yard and, I, and they're connected to Kim. And I really, really hope that they're not sabotaging it by muting my microphone. I'd love to know what was causing that mute issue. Now it's stopped. Now, since I've floated the idea that someone who has access to my stream yard and is friends with Kim might have been interfering, it's mysteriously stopped. Isn't that interesting? Lloyd also starts off his live stream by saying that his wife has asked him to speak about her as little as possible. He speaks about her a lot because frankly it's all about her it's all about what he did to her so it's kind of unavoidable and probably was not a good idea to do this at all that is my opinion despite there being so many good moments good memories and good things about our relationship there were things about, now the camera's gone again. In between fixing technical difficulties and blaming them on his saboteurs, his enemies, his haters, he starts getting super chats, which are like donations, people giving money to the channel. These are being put on screen. So as he is tearfully and full of adrenaline, admitting and confessing to the allegations of infidelity, money is popping up 
on the screen. Donations of twenty, a hundred dollars, and oh yeah, I just kind of said that as if it was a known fact, but Lloyd admitted to basically everything in the video. He admitted that yes, he had been cheating on his wife with prostitutes over the course of three or four years. I went outside my marriage. He also said, yes, I did go to Thailand. He also did not deny using viewer funds to support this prostitution, and in fact seemed to double down on his right to do so. Apparently, I have to account for how I spend my money when this is my job. So, <laughs> well, like when a doctor receives money for helping people, apparently he needs to account for you know, what holidays he goes on, how he spends his money in his private time because he's helping people. Apparently, oh no, sorry, he doesn't. So as he's admitting to using prostitutes to cheat on his wife over a course of several years, as he is admitting to using viewer donations to support that habit, as he's admitting to going to Thailand, significant super chats are popping up and he's getting emotional and Live streams with technical difficulties are just cringy in and of themselves because you see a person trying to get their point across while also wrestling with why the camera is not working. Because this is where, this is what this cult, and now my camera's frozen again. As all that is happening, he is also for some reason deciding to respond to YouTube live comments. Use a therapist, I am using a therapist. Stop, stop. Ah, Brandon's got an opinion. Quit blaming a victim, dude. You cheat on your wife. It isn't about the org. Focus on you and your family. Yes, I cheated on my wife. But confide in your family and your therapist. Yeah, pretty much that now. And Javier. <laughs> Javier can't... No, no, Javier wouldn't do what Kim did. I don't think anyone would do what Kim did. What, what Kim did is really, really messed up. I'm here to tell you that we're all imperfect and we all make mistakes and we all have to deal with fucked up situations to the best of our ability. And my fucked up situation was that I had my sexuality tampered with. One of these comments accuses him of grooming a 14 year old girl. Seriously, alien encounters, fuck you. Seriously. You were grooming a 14 year old. What? What? And most clipped was this moment. Mr. kind of saintly Brandon, who's never done anything wrong in his life and has always had total mastery over his penis. This is all what we would say in the community, not a great look chief. The stream has already been very awkward and have been going on for way too long by this point. Lloyd is not making himself look awesome. And then he decides to go through Kim's statement and kind of dunk on it and defend himself at the same time. It, it went, it was a total U-turn. It was literally one day she was being really, really helpful and then she flipped. What absolutely nobody ever wants to hear is justifications from somebody on why it was actually kind of fine that they cheated on their spouse. You don't want to hear, yes, I cheated on my wife, but... Yes, I cheated on my wife. But Throughout this entire thing, Lloyd is dropping the sexual repression card. I, you know, the channel I have, if you think about it, it, ironically, the channel is here, the channel exists, and Lloyd Evans as an activist exists, because I am seriously messed up sexually. And now the camera's gone again. Sexual repression is a legitimate issue within Jehovah's Witnesses. They have very stringent rules, not just on any kind of premarital sex, but on masturbation, on viewing porn, anything sexual happening before marriage, not good. And yes, this is something that all of us have to unravel as ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. We all suffered through it, and we all have to deal with it. I happen to know for a certainty, though, that a lot of guys cheat on their wives. They didn't grow up as a Jehovah's Witness. Sexual repression is something that Lloyd has talked about on his channel and in his book a lot. It's something that I know I identified with a lot when I first found his channel. And I was really happy to find somebody talking about that because it can be kind of an embarrassing issue. Like, if you're married as a Jehovah's Witness, chances are you were a virgin until you got married. 
that's not common. It's not something that most people want to admit. Having sexual difficulty is not something that anybody wants to talk about. So to find somebody willing to talk about those things is genuinely cathartic for a lot of people. And for him to be using this as an excuse is really not great. His defenders would probably say that he's merely using it to explain his actions, not to excuse his actions, but I guess you would just have to see for yourself whether or not that rings true. Lloyd even goes as far as to say that his channel wouldn't exist without the sexual repression. And, you know, that's just not awesome because it's kind of like you're telling your viewers, look, I know it's bad that I cheated on my wife, but, you know, aren't you glad you have the channel? Because those two things can't exist without one another. Everything that you have seen on the channel, everything, every information I've produced, all, all the work I've done, if you think about it, stems from my sexual repression and how, how messed up I was. So Lloyd knows that this is something that basically everyone in his audience has had to deal with or is currently dealing with, struggling with, trying to overcome, and is using it as a cudgel. It's not a good look, Chief. I'm just gonna say my opinion. This live stream was very bad and embarrassing, but the most embarrassing part of it was that he inadvertently proved Kim's point about manipulating people and refusing to accept responsibility and always being the victim by doing exactly that in his response to her. Some weeks back, Lloyd openly and without warning notified me of his infidelity and engagement with prostitutes on a very regular basis. It was maybe, I'm gonna say two or three months in between, I would go to see sex workers. <laughs> I didn't have an opportunity to do it on a regular basis. I'm not sure I would need to. So that part is factually untrue and libelous. I'm going to say Lloyd openly and without warning notified me of his infidelity and engagement with prostitutes on a very regular basis over many years. Many years? I think I'm going to say three or four years. If that's many years, then fine. So even as he's admitting to the thing she's saying, he's downplaying it and trying to make Kim sound like she's crazy. Like, pfft over many years. Okay, well, if you consider three or four to be many, and like, yeah. He also said some weird things like, it's not like I had an affair, and it is like that. He did have many affairs over the years. There were no affairs, there were no, um, because I, because I, I, I haven't really wanted a relationship with anyone else. I haven't looked for one, but I have, looked for um sex i think what he was trying to say is that they weren't emotional affairs he didn't fall in love with anybody else but that's not what an affair is that's not the only thing an affair is so what's he talking about exactly needless to say this made lloyd look not great and made everything worse for him in the sense that it emboldened a lot of his critics who formerly felt silenced by him to finally rise up and speak their truth openly without fear of being cancelled. Or I should say with less fear of being cancelled. And here's where I admit to feeling some guilt in this matter. When I was first starting talking about maybe doing a YouTube channel, I got several messages from people telling me to look out for Lloyd and not to trust him. People told me that he's emotionally manipulative, that he silences and shuns people who cross him, that he's incapable of accepting criticism. In the meantime, I have DM'd Lloyd and he has been very nice to me. And some of these allegations came from people that I didn't know. Some of them though did and came from people who I now consider to be pretty close friends. And I just sort of ignored them. And I feel really shitty about that. I had seen how Lloyd was able to silence people. 
Jason Wynn was one of the most respected and important activists. He's the founder of avoidjw.org, which is one of the most invaluable resources for ex-Jehovah's Witnesses everywhere. It's a wonderful database of all of their leaked publications, elders' letters, what have you. But he crossed Lloyd a couple times, got publicly shamed on Twitter, and, you know, frankly, I did not help the situation. I called him out too on something that I disagreed with him, and now you don't hear so much from Jason these days. It's really a bummer, and I feel like shit, and Jason, if you're watching this, I'm really sorry. But anyway, our disagreements, I, I just feel bad that I, I contributed to this kind of like canceling, and that really sucks. I'm very sorry. And I'm also sorry for what you had to endure from Lloyd. I'm sure it was more than just what I saw on Twitter. So I'm feeling not great. I have just seen in real time on a live stream, Lloyd gaslight a woman who accused him of stuff, but he admitted to the stuff that she's accusing him of. And he's still gaslighting her anyway, like really sweating the small stuff and kind of refusing to take responsibility for the things he's done. It's nobody's business. It's, it just isn't. But apparently you, you will need to know what, what I do with my dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what all of this boils down to. Everyone, the world needs to know what, what I do with my dick. It's one of those things where he says he's taking responsibility, but it always has a big but after it. I know you're right, but, but what? Everyone I know has a big butt. One of the things that bothered me specifically was Lloyd talking about how his patrons don't have a right to know what he does with his money. You know, it's not like there's any kind of precedent for a Patreon creator giving a breakdown of what their patron's money is going towards, right? That's not a thing that I know for sure happens and my friends who are content creators do. Yeah, no, it's actually pretty common practice for creators to do exactly that. Obviously not giving receipts for absolutely every penny cent, but providing breakdowns. This percent of your donations are going towards the channel. This part goes towards my quality of life, like food and clothing and stuff like that. This is super common. The other problem is Lloyd has specifically told his followers that all of their donations go towards activism. <laughs> the other thing that comes out in the wake of all of this that makes me particularly upset is finding out that no member of JW Watch, including Mark O'Donnell, has ever been paid for their work. Mark O'Donnell, who is really the face of JW Watch. He is the most respected part of JW Watch, an actual respected reporter who travels around the United States, holds himself to journalistic standards, and reports on court cases involving Watchtower, breaks cases, breaks news stories, has apparently been doing all of this on his own dime. What makes this especially repulsive, in my opinion, is that in every episode of JW Watch, what do you know? Super chats are constantly popping up on the screen. They are always streamed live and viewers are encouraged to donate. Those donations are read on the screen. If you want your comment read, you have to send in a super chat. So it turns out that after all of this time, Lloyd has just been reading monetary donations, sometimes in the hundreds of dollars, and never giving any of it to the people doing the actual legwork. Because as much as Lloyd is respected as a voice in the community, He's not the one doing the legwork. He is not the one going and traveling across the United States to report on these cases. He's not the one leaking videos from Watchtower. He's not the one providing legal expertise. That's what people on his team are doing and whistleblowers within the community are doing. Lloyd is obviously the face of the Lloyd Evans channel. He's the one presenting this information. He's very good at presenting this information. And that's not to say that he doesn't do on the ground activism and organizing on his own. But the people who are bringing respectability to the channel are not being compensated. And you can argue this is a nonprofit. profit he never said that he was paying them. Well, apparently he had enough leftover money to pay prostitutes to cheat on his wife, but not enough money to pay Mark O'Donnell to go cover the court cases that bring his channel legitimacy in the first place. Is it illegal? No. Is it a great look? 
I would argue it is not. Lloyd evidently wasn't super happy with his stream either because he later went on to post a update on Facebook where he expanded upon or went back on some of the things he said during the stream. He wanted to clarify that he now does not think that anyone interfered with his live stream and apologizes to them unreservedly for making that inference slash accusation. He then, for some reason, goes on to say, since the live stream, I have been informed that producer Bob was very much involved behind the scenes in orchestrating slash supporting the sharing of private information about my life despite her personal assurances to the contrary. Now, why did this need to be added or clarified? It almost seems to be added as if to say, hey, also, I was giving a lot of heat to Kim, but it's also producer Bob's fault, so you should direct a lot of ire their way as well. What little I've glimpsed of people weighing in on this issue falls very much into slippery slope fallacy territory. To reiterate, I am not a criminal, nor have I engaged in or facilitated any abusive behavior. Aside from the violation of privacy that impacts my whole family, there is one injured party in all of this, my wife, and I know she objects to people treating her as a victim. Anyone wishing to accuse me of perpetrating crime should be going to the police before posting their claims on social media if they truly care about the crime itself or any potential victims. To hurl accusations without proof of any kind is slander and libelous, I'm gonna say. I am seeing accusations resurfacing that were leveled at me in 2017 as part of a cyberbullying campaign orchestrated by the self-styled Vast Apostate Army, or VAA. These accusations were forwarded to both the producers of Leia Remini's Aftermath series and Ixa in an attempt to sabotage my involvement in both of these projects, but were given short shrift because minimal scrutiny revealed them to be utter fiction the product of troubled minds who seek my destruction so fervently that they would like there to be a child who was molested or sexted by me. Let me be clear, I have many flaws, but exposing child sex abuse while participating in it is not and has never been one of them. It feels like a violation that I even need to say that. We'll get into more of his Facebook post later and we will be revisiting the vast apostate army allegations, but this is what Lloyd is saying at the time. Here's where Inception starts happening a little bit. Kim posted the statement. Lloyd responded to her statement. And then another YouTuber and Kim responded to the response to her statement. On February 4th, a YouTuber named Jonathan Berger hosted Kim Silvio on a live stream where they discussed Kim's side of the story, uh, her responses to his live stream, her defense of her initial post, and the fallout and how it's affected her. It's actually not super accurate to call him a YouTuber because he later stated that he only started the channel for the purpose of doing this live stream. He's just somebody who had been very vocal on Twitter about this. He's obviously an ex-Jehovah's Witness who has been around for a long time, had a lot of opinions, wanted to have Kim on to share her side of the story and give her a platform. This is where we get into my opinion, but in my opinion, the first half of this live stream is pretty good. Kim is able to state her side of the story and is able to explain herself a lot more. Part of the conversation that he was discussing, uh, uh, you know, of his interactions with Diana, he made a comment, and, and I won't speak to the comment, but the comment related to the fact that he was engaging in prostitution and, you know, sexual activities with sex workers and has been for some time. But he said it as if I had known, that it was only that Diana hadn't known uh, and I'm st sitting there thinking, hang on a minute, uh, well, and, and Lloyd isn't aware of this, but at the time we agreed that we would see him through this crisis and then we would resign from, from JW Watch because yeah. we were absolutely not in a position um, to be able to support his work any further, knowing what we had known. But we're also very mindful of, of um, you know, his situation at the time, we, we wanted to just, you know, try, I was very concerned for his brand at that point. I, I, I really, I didn't, hadn't had time to comprehend and really understand what we'd been told. I think she's much better able to articulate why she was motivated to post this information in the first place. You know, she didn't want to know this. She was disturbed by it. And she felt strongly that she needed to do so, that she would want to know. She had already said this, but it just is a little bit more impactful coming from her mouth with a little bit more information. I think one of the biggest, as I said, one of the biggest shocks was just the imposition of the information upon us without notice or warning. And, uh, you know, what am I just supposed to say? Oh, okay, no worries. And obviously the shock of it, you know, it, he could have said, you know, 
my wife and I are having marital problems. I need some time away, you know, um, let's get the team sorted out. Yep, no problem. Sufficient. He, there was no need um, to, to impose that information. I, I, I still, to this day, I still don't understand why he did that. And this is the thing, so much of the divide in the community at this point is about why can't we all just have our own opinions and shut up about them and not remind me of all the drama? Well, Kim has an opinion too, and in her opinion, it was important to share this information. And had she not posted this information, a lot of people who felt they had been personally victimized by Lloyd Evans wouldn't have had the confidence to come forward and talk about their story. So whether or not you agree with her initial decision to post this information, a lot of good has come from it. A lot of other information has come out as a result of it. And who gets to decide whose opinion is valid? Like, if we all get to have our own opinion, so does she. This was her opinion. This is how she decided to handle it. This is me deciding how to handle dealing with my decisions. And is this a bad idea? It, it, probably. People have actually told me not to do it. Kim, revealing this information in the way she did was, in her opinion, the best way to handle it. In Lloyd's opinion, the best way to handle the situation was to do a live stream and respond to it. In my opinion, the best way to sort out all this information is to try and carefully edit a video and piece together what we know and what we don't know. In your opinion, you're probably typing out a comment as to why what I'm doing is good or bad or completely unnecessary, and that is also valid. However, if you criticize me, I will remove your comment immediately. The second half of Jonathan Berger's stream, however, in my opinion, was not as effective. John does most of the talking, Kim doesn't really get to say much, or just simply doesn't have a lot to add. I don't know if you have any more to say about this, Kim, but... Uh, very little. I do think it's worth watching because it really captures the emotions of the moment. I think his impassioned arguments reflect how a lot of XJWs were feeling at the time. However, in terms of rhetoric and argumentation, it's not the most convincing thing in the world, and it gives Lloyd a lot of ammunition to deflect the actual criticisms he is receiving. Again, I believe everybody involved with that stream had the best of intentions, but I don't think it was super effective overall. The other big thing that comes up in connection to the Lloyd Evans drama at this point is more information regarding sex work in Thailand. Now at the time, a lot of XJWs, including myself, didn't see there being anything uniquely problematic about Thailand. Why would Kim bring that up specifically? Why does it matter? Well, some more informed members of our community began to make this clear to us. Before we get into this section, I want to make it clear that I'm very pro-sex worker. Sex is good and cool, and sex workers are good and cool. Sex workers also need a lot of protection in place to make sure that what they do can be done safely. They are at high risk for exploitation, and it is the exploitation of sex workers that we're going to be talking about. Thailand is infamous for human trafficking in general, and sadly this includes sex trafficking. And sadly this includes minors. It is therefore a common destination for male tourists wanting to sleep with prostituted children. The most recent data from the Global Slavery Index was in 2018, and reports that in Thailand around 610 10,000 people are currently victims of human trafficking. The reason why Thailand is a particular hotspot for this is because people from neighboring countries attempt to immigrate to Thailand for better jobs, but the legal process is long, complicated, and often expensive. For some ethnic minorities, obtaining a visa may be impossible. This makes it easy for predators to take advantage of those unable to migrate legally, including children, by forcing, coercing, or deceiving them into sexual exploitation. Ekpat, and child prostitution in Asian tourism is, according to Wikipedia, a global network of civil society organizations that works to end the sexual exploitation of children. ECPAT reports, research suggests that working children are particularly vulnerable to sexual exploitation. Children working in the tourism industry, karaoke bars, restaurants, cafes, and hotels, are at risk for sexual exploitation by patrons and employers. Why does all of this matter in regards to Lloyd Evans? Well, it's because sex work in Thailand is systemically exploitative. Unlike more progressive countries, which can slightly more protect their workers to make sure that everything that's going on is consensual and safe, Thailand is a popular tourist destination because of its lack of regulation. Does this mean that every single sex worker there is definitely doing so under duress or coercion? No. 
but it does mean that if a tourist goes to Thailand and sleeps with prostitutes, even best case scenario, if he can be absolutely sure that the person he slept with is not a minor and is 100% consenting, well, that tourist is still participating in a systemically oppressive system that dominates women and children specifically. Some concerned critics of Lloyd would add that because of the lack of regulation in Thailand, a person sleeping with prostitutes there could not be absolutely certain that they weren't sleeping with a minor, but that gets into the tricky paradox of having to prove a negative which obviously Lloyd could never do. And to that point, we can't even be sure that Lloyd did sleep with prostitutes in Thailand. Is what I'd be saying if Lloyd hadn't admitted to sleeping with prostitutes in Thailand. In his February 4th Facebook post, Lloyd stated, A specific concern that has been brought to my attention is the notoriety of Thailand's sex industry and its problems with sex trafficking. Such concerns were doubtless fueled by Kim's remark that while in Thailand, I was making use of the many different facilities. I want to assure everyone that I did not go to Thailand for its sex industry. My main reasons for choosing it as a place for reflection and self-discovery were its low cost of living, I didn't want to live exorbitantly if my trip ended up lasting many weeks, its amazing food, and its natural beauty. If sex tourism had been my incentive, I am sure I would have headed straight to Bangkok rather than Phuket and its stunning beaches. Suffice it to say, not that it's anyone's business, but of those I met in Thailand, sex workers or otherwise, nobody was a minor by either Thai or US law, and all were in their 20s or older. So in addition to admitting that he did, in fact, see sex workers in Thailand, this statement is weird, right? He says he did not go to Thailand specifically for sex tourism, but he engaged in it anyway. And this wasn't even the community's main concern. The primary concern was that he slept with sex workers there at all, which he did. And he goes on to make the rather unfortunately worded statement that if sex tourism had been his incentive, he sure he would have headed straight to Bangkok rather than Phuket and its stunning beaches. Maybe I'm being a little uncharitable, but it sort of sounded to me like he was saying something along the lines of, yes, I knew about the issues with Thailand's sex industry, but I participated in it anyway. And besides, the real perverts know that Bangkok is where the action's at. A thing I know for some reason. I know that's not what Lloyd was saying or even trying to say, but it was an unfortunately worded statement that hit a lot of people's ears wrong. The kicker to all this being that he's paying for these trips with viewer donations and all the while he's not even paying his own staff. But in his Facebook post, he doubles down on his argument that as a professional activist, he gets to spend his wages as he pleases. I simply shouldn't be asked to account for how I spend my personal funds. If that had ever been the case, I would not have used Patreon to begin with. Like when a doctor receives money for helping people, apparently he needs to account for, you know, what holidays he goes on, how he spends his money in his private time because he's helping people. Apparently... Oh no, sorry, he doesn't. I don't totally disagree with the sentiment, by the way. I have a Patreon, I don't disclose where all the funds go, but YouTube is also currently just my part-time hobby, and I have a full-time job that pays for like 90% of my bills and illegal activities. The issue with Lloyd's statement isn't even really the fact that he had previously made statements to the contrary. It's just that, in general, People don't like to think that their favorite YouTuber is using the ad revenue or donations to directly fund cheating on their spouse. A spouse that has become beloved by the community because she's been on the channel multiple times. To state my own biases once again in all this, before his live stream and the subsequent Facebook posts, I had pretty much been in the camp of, this is shitty behavior, but it's really none of my business and we all make mistakes. After the stream and the Facebook post, I went into the camp of, I can't pretend to be okay with any part of this anymore. One quick mini controversy in these couple of days following the live stream cropped up when some of Lloyd's photos got leaked, showing him and an unknown lady friend in Thailand taking selfies. And yeah, it really wasn't anything at all. He took a selfie with someone and he says in his Facebook post she was in her 20s, who cares? It's also around this time that Lloyd begins to use his own words, unapologetically blocking on social media anyone who sympathizes with Kim and her grossly judgmental, vindictive, surreptitious behavior. On the surface, no real issues here. Unapologetically blocking people on social media is based in self-care pills. 
The issue that Lloyd's critics have here, and again, to be clear, I am one of those critics, is that he's taking this complicated controversy surrounding his behavior and chiseling it down to Kim good versus Kim bad. It is Kim's act of disclosing Lloyd's misdeeds that is apparently grossly judgmental, vindictive, and surreptitious. Lloyd, of course, famously not being judgmental, never being vindictive, and always being completely upfront about all of his business dealings. Stay tuned. In his Facebook post, Lloyd goes on to say, what Kim has done is the single biggest personal violation I have ever experienced, and it's hard to believe anyone will ever be able to top it. I generally shy away from your either with me or against me rhetoric, and I want to be clear that I am not asking people to take sides. But if you use your social media platform to facilitate what is now being inflicted on me and my family, I don't want to see any of what you say showing up in my feed in the future. I don't have any issue with Lloyd seeing Kim's initial post as a personal betrayal. I think were we in his position, we would feel the exact same way. And besides, if there's one thing that both sides can agree on, it's that ultimately Lloyd's spouse should have been the one to make the call whether or not to make this public. But Lloyd is now characterizing any and all criticism of him as an inherent endorsement of Kim's decision to make this information publicly available. And if you want to vocalize your opinion, or Twitterize it, that is you inflicting something, harm presumably, against him and his family. Even if you're not tagging Lloyd in your posts, or even using his full name, or if you have a private account that only approved followers can see, the mere existence of any criticism about his actions on social media is an invasion of his wife and children's privacy. To quote one of America's great politicians, it can be two things. Aside from a handful of Twitter users, the criticism about Lloyd is about Lloyd. It's about his past and current behavior. Like Kim, we didn't ask to be told this information. We didn't necessarily want to know this information, but we do now. It's possible to think that Kim shouldn't have made her post, and at the same time think that Lloyd has and or is currently engaging in incredibly harmful and problematic behavior. And in the hours, days, and weeks that followed Kim's initial post, a lot of Lloyd's past problematic behavior began to resurface. I say resurface because this is not the first time there has been a Lloyd Evans controversy, nor is it the first time he's trotted out the, I'm not saying you have to be with me or against me, but flex. The smoking gun for people who think that Lloyd is engaged in some kind of pedophilic behavior is an old video of his that resurfaced, which was recorded the day before his judicial committee in Croatia. For those who are not witnesses and have never been witnesses watching a channel, a judicial committee is like a secret tribunal where the elders call you in to judge your sins, and this is the meeting that generally ends with people being either reproved or disfellowshipped and thereby shunned. And in this video, he casually drops the information that there's going to be a branch representative from Croatia at his judicial committee. Tomorrow, I've been summoned to a judicial committee, uh, three elders, one of whom will be from the Croatian branch office. I have talked to several former elders in the researching of this video, including a former branch Bethel elder, and nobody can seem to find any sort of precedent for anything like this happening. A branch representative going to an outside congregation's judicial committee is a massive deal, and as far as we can tell, has never happened before. This stands out for any XJW because elders forming a judicial case are supposed to call the branch in any case of CSA. Not the police the branch, and then the branch decides what to do from there. Lloyd makes it sound like the branch rep is there because of his apostasy. If that's true, it had certainly never happened before and has never happened since. If former governing body member Raymond Franz didn't have a branch rep at his JC, why would this, at the time, small-time YouTuber and blogger? So for those who were suspicious of Lloyd being engaged in some truly nefarious shit, this little info drop really hit hard, especially when paired with Lloyd's shocking decision to not secretly record his JC. Because, as he puts it, I've already decided that um, I'm not going to be recording it. I'm not going to make any efforts to record it. And the reason why I'm not going to be recording it is because I don't want anything to hide. I don't have anything to hide. Surely, though, the opposite makes a little more sense. Like, if you wanted to make sure 
that you were on the up and up and everything you said made sense and was true and everything the elders said was misleading and unfair, you'd want to record your judicial committee so you could accurately show what happened within it. In fact, not recording your meeting would be the thing you'd want to do if you wanted to make sure that everything that was said within that meeting remained hidden. And it's also super out of character for Lloyd to turn down an opportunity to create content that would generate a lot of interest, especially because these were the early days of his channel before he'd made a big splash. He was trying to build his brand, and he had the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to secretly record a branch member at a private meeting of Jehovah's Witnesses. Does this actually mean anything significant? Well, we don't really have any way of knowing, so we can't really make an accusation in any fair way. Not everybody who doesn't record their judicial committee has something to hide, certainly. And the elders call the branch for all sorts of reasons, not just for child sex abuse. So you can't say that there's only one possible explanation for them calling the branch representative in because we don't even have any precedent for this having taken place before Lloyd's instance or afterwards. And just because we don't have any record of this happening before or since doesn't mean it didn't happen to Lloyd. And just because that did happen to Lloyd doesn't mean that it wasn't just for his apostasy. You know, maybe the Croatian branch was sincerely worried about his channel, about his website, about him starting a Croatian website, that's mostly what he talks about in the videos. This is one that will file under speculation, because even though it's weird and unexplained, and kind of unexplainable, it's not proof that anything untoward happened. But one minor controversy that resurfaced kind of embodies the entire history of Lloyd Evans scandals. And I'm going to call this scandal the one where Lloyd tried to publish his own edition of Crisis of Conscience. For the three people who have made it this far in the video, Crisis of Conscience by Raymond Franz is the most important work in the history of XJW activism. It is a tell-all autobiography written by a former Jehovah's Witness governing body member. Somebody made it to the absolute top of the JW ladder, realized it was crap, and spilled all the organization's secrets in a way that still haunts it to this day. In 2015, Lloyd Evans posted a video to his channel called Belgian Lawsuit Update, Cedars Vlog 97, and at the very end of it, he announced a giveaway of a copy of Crisis of Conscience. Oh, we haven't touched on this, but Lloyd Evans' channel used to be called the John Cedars channel. That was his alias before he started posting as himself. That's an important bit of context. Um, I will leave you with a competition because I have to give away a copy of Crisis of Conscience. Now, this isn't a, an original, authentic copy. This is actually... Um, I won't call it a bootleg, it's, a, it's been printed specially by my friend in Romania and it has on the back uh, the JW Survey logo, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but I have a number of these for friends and family uh, in my own collection, but I'm willing to give one away to one of my subscribers. The section has been cut out of the original video, but remains as a part of a rebuttal done at the time by a channel called Alien Encounters. Seriously, Alien Encounters, fuck you. Let's review this short section. It's not a bootleg. It was printed specially, intentionally, with Lloyd's direction by his friend, and it has his logo on the back of it. Um, I won't call it a bootleg. It's, a, it's been printed specially by my friend in Romania. This garnered some criticism. Let's look at what that criticism was. So what had happened was, XJW YouTubers, including notably some of his most determined haters, Kim and Mikey, criticized him for printing and distributing these bootlegs. And this got the ball rolling on some other folks criticizing him, such as the aforementioned alien encounters. John Cedars continues to double down on this claim by saying he is not violating any copyright, and he is only giving away a personal reproduction that was printed from a PDF from the public domain. He claims that he has tried contacting the rights holders, but as you can see for yourself, they seem to have no interest in making printed copies available to sell. Lloyd responded with the Reddit post, which among other things revealed that the copyright holder herself had actually sent him a cease and desist letter. He also posted about this on his blog, JW Watch, nay JW Survey. Lloyd was very upset about these accusations, from the copyright holder, 
that this infringed on copyright law. And as we all know, if you circulate bootleg movies online, it's fine as long as you don't charge people money for it and you never transfer them to Blu-ray or DVD. He said in the video it wasn't a bootleg. Um, I won't call it a bootleg. But in the Reddit post, he said it was. He said he wasn't violating copyright, but he literally was, per the law. Most importantly, he said he wasn't selling copies, just giving them away for free. But later in the same post, he said he would arrange for all placed orders of bootleg copies other than my five copies to be cancelled, and the buyers refunded. Fortunately, although a number of orders were placed with my Romanian friend, none of the books had yet been printed, thus allowing him to abort any future unauthorized reproduction and return all the money. I have a question. If you weren't selling them, then why are there buyers who need their money refunded? Kinda sounds like you were selling them to buyers. Kind of sounds like a lie to sell bootlegs. You know, like a crime. And he does sort of skip over the big criticism from the rest of the community at the time, which was Ray Franz didn't want his work to enter the public domain because he didn't want people to be able to print their own versions of his book and sell them for money. He wanted it to remain as a PDF online for free. I would argue that the biggest issue with the one where Lloyd tried to publish his own edition of Crisis of Conscience is just one of bad taste. I'm not trying to be a moral policeman here, but in my opinion, printing and distributing copies of a dead man's free on the internet book with your YouTube channel's logo on the back of it is just cringe. The tried and true, yikes, this ain't it, chief. Friendly reminder that copyright infringement is not a good look. Maybe next time don't put your YouTube logo on the back of someone else's creative work? Disappointing. This is, by all accounts, a very silly controversy that's more cringe than anything else, but it's also demonstrative of a pattern. What happened here? Lloyd did something that was, at best, dubiously ethical, treated his critics as if they were crazy people, and insinuated that anybody who agreed with their criticism was simply a hater proliferating a conspiracy against him personally. Lloyd did nothing wrong. The real problem is all these insane people complaining incessantly that he did something in bad taste. This has happened a few times with Lloyd. He's gotten into public disputes with BCG, one of the victims whose story was front and center in the Australian Royal Commission, arguably the most devastating public embarrassment in the modern history of Watchtower. This landmark historic case wouldn't have been possible without BCG, but what do you know, she expressed some measured criticism of him and was blocked on social media. You're oversimplifying an incredibly complex issue that pertains to free speech. If you couldn't understand my concerns when we met in person, it's unlikely I'll persuade you in tweets. But I never attacked you and will have to block you if you insist on slandering me publicly. And libelous, I'm gonna say. This is a CSA victim whose day in court arguably made Lloyd's career possible, and he's beefing with her. Lloyd beefs with a lot of people, especially women, I'm not going to post screenshots because I don't want to send Lloyd's army of fans after them, but it doesn't take a lot of clicking around and searching on Twitter to see that the majority of people criticizing Lloyd and expressing issues with his past behavior are women. Women who have, in some cases, been raising red flags about his behavior for years. Now, there are also definitely some false allegations against Lloyd, and we're going to be getting to that soon. But if there's one constant that's shown itself to be true over the years, it's that Lloyd simply cannot handle criticism or criticism-adjacent comments at all, ever, in any way. About a year ago, somebody went on the XJW subreddit and innocently asked why so many people seem to have a problem with Lloyd. Now, it seemed obvious to almost everyone in the thread that OP was asking this because he liked Lloyd, and liked his videos, and didn't understand why somebody would have an issue with him. This was not obvious to Lloyd, who posted own goal after own goal in a remarkable accidental demonstration of exactly why so many people have problems with him. And libelous, I'm gonna say. Wow, so people have bitched about me over the years, and I've upset people by having opinions on issues that differ from theirs. No shit, Sherlock. It comes with the territory when you stick your neck out and engage in valuable activism under your real name and likeness. 
Not that you would know much about that. Anyway, yes, off you trot back into the shadows from whence you came. I'm sure there will be more shit for you to stir another day. Oh no, I failed to voice your opinions for you on a certain topic. How can I make this right? I am experimenting in developing my mind-reading powers, but so far with little success. And you're asking that as a person who has the benefit and protection of total anonymity versus someone who has made himself public under his real name in undertaking his activism work. There's a huge imbalance here. I have a reputation that can be attacked. You don't. I can be libeled and slandered. Libelous. I'm gonna say. This is just a, quote, point of order, end quote, for the mods to consider. I'm sure the OP was posted in good faith and without any ulterior motive, but do we really need to have Reddit posts that amount to an invitation for people to chime in about what people like or don't like about a fellow XJW? Is that really helpful for the mental health of XJWs? Does it encourage future XJWs to step forward and get involved in activism work on camera under their real name? If they know they can look forward to why don't people like John Smith posts with dozens weighing in. <laughs> there are dozens of us. FYI, I would feel the same way if the post asked why do people like Lloyd Evans? I know I've not posted much due to time constraints, but I want to make this my farewell post. It's come to my attention that this subreddit is no longer well moderated as I had assumed, and I don't feel comfortable posting here or recommending this as a resource to my viewers or readers. Yesterday someone made a post literally titled, Real Question, Why Are There People That Don't Like Lloyd Evans? And it was allowed to gather dozens of comments over many hours. There are dozens of us. The post only got deleted after the poster themselves acknowledged how unreasonable and uncalled for it was. I have always said I am perfectly fine with being challenged on my ideas, statements, comments, books, or videos, but a sweeping call for gossip slash slander slash mudslinging clearly goes beyond fair and reasonable criticisms and is a breach of the community rule. There was that time when Lloyd made a flowchart showing why anyone who thought Russia's ban on Jehovah's Witnesses was a good idea needed mental help, and then when he was called out on this... Okay, great, you're right, you said a fact, but you can't go pushing that onto other people, making flowchart that labels people mentally unstable for disagreeing with you. You can't change other people's view based on your own culture. If you are not here to present a solution, then what is your end goal? Because to me, it seems like you only want to change people's views based on your own culture. I didn't say anyone who disagrees with me is unstable. I said anyone who disagrees with me on this issue is unstable, and the flowchart explains why. I want to be clear. People are better than a collection of their worst tweets. People aren't as bad as their worst day. That's what the Joker believes. I'm Batman. And Lloyd does really good work on his channel. I think this is why criticism of him has generally slid off his back over the years. In addition to loudly and aggressively shutting down any dissent and contextualizing that dissent to his viewers as the rambling of madmen, his work is for the most part genuinely insightful, well-researched, and valuable to thousands of subscribers. But I think even Lloyd would admit that he has a quick trigger finger when it comes to reactive comments. This has not made him a lot of friends over the years, and since the point of this video is to separate what we know with what we don't know or can't know, we have to get into these weird, spurious, or outright false claims that have been made about him in the midst of all of the true things that we know. There's so much made up stuff online about me and Diana right now, it's overwhelming. Chasing down every last channel and social media account that spreading lies is a monumental task. But I'm damned well going to do it if it takes years. My work is too important to let them win. Flawless transition, I'm great at making videos. So here's what happened. I had this really great elaborate segment planned out where I was gonna get into the weeds with this stuff. I was really gonna get into one of these things that have uh, resurfaced since Lloyd's uh, scandal broke. It was an old post on Facebook of somebody who claimed to be a family member of uh, Lloyd's wife. And it's from about four years ago and it alleges some really heinous things on Lloyd's part. It alleges that he groomed a 14-year-old, like, you know, that person alleged in the video earlier. And it turns out that, you know, the, the Alien Encounters person also was kind of signal boosting this post back in the day, and so were the Kim and Mikey guys. So I was going to get into this post, and I was going to, you know, really analyze it and get into whether or not it's real and whether or not we can trust it. And then the biggest thing to come out of all this are these leaked emails. But his emails, though. February 14th, a Twitter account called The Vast Apostate Hour, which is the Twitter account of a YouTube channel of the same name, posted some leaked emails. Allegedly leaked emails, I should say. 
These were presented as screenshots of emails from Lloyd back in 2008 when he was still a witness and a 14 year old girl. And it was some of the most uh, nasty, horrible stuff I've ever seen. There's no way I'm gonna show it on the channel. It is very upsetting to read, whether or not you think they're real. And there was a lot of intrigue with this stuff because the emails corroborated a lot of things from that Facebook post from like four years ago from this guy named Marco. And then Marco released a statement after the emails came out. And the statement corroborated a lot of things in the emails. And we were gonna really get into some of the like internet sleuthing that people had done, theories about why they're true or why they're not. And I, I had a whole dissertation prepared, and then uh, Lloyd's wife uh, released a statement saying that they uh, weren't true. So, that's kind of it. I will recount the significance of these for the sake of history. Obviously, historians will be studying this video in 50, 100, 10,000 years. So back in 2017, this guy named Marco posted this statement on his Facebook page alleging that Lloyd had groomed a 14-year-old. He got into some of the gross details of it, and he claimed that he was a relative of Lloyd's wife um, in Croatia. This was picked up on by, uh, you guessed it, uh, anti-Cedars HQ. This was picked up on by people who have been consistently aggrieved by Lloyd over the years, like Kim and Mikey, the Vast Apostate Hour, and a lot of the other people who are critical of him, and who he has, uh, as you've seen throughout the video, uh, been very mean towards, even as he claims that they're bullying him. We'll get into that in the finale of this whole thing. Now, I am nothing if not a professional investigative journalist, and the issue that I have with this bit of alleged evidence is that just on the surface, it's really difficult to understand. This is posted by somebody who claims to be a relative of Lloyd, but how can we possibly confirm that? We don't know. And it's difficult to understand what the person is trying to say to the point where a lot is being lost in translation and there would be a lot of plausible deniability if this were ever allowed to be admitted as evidence because I think you speak of Diana, the wife of this man, but as she holds keys and won't allow Castle Gate unlocked, you come ask me. Did I once speak like this in public? I know about my culture. This is disgraceful to speak in public of such a dirty thing. But what choice do I get? All you people being played like violin by this pederast. Yes, all pederasts, known for being honest and telling full story when asked about events. My English not great, but sarcasm is. This man Tom, he say jack off in front of 14 year old. This not correct, and Lloyd tell you so, but he not correct you. I think you get... You get what I'm saying. It's a little tough to tell what he's talking about at times. Now, the important part in all this is a little bit later in the post where he paints this picture of what happened with Lloyd. Lloyd has talked before on his channel and in his book about uh, some marital issues that he had back in the day before he had woken up when he was still a witness. The way he described it, he was into online chat rooms where he would sext with women and what this person alleges is that there was more to that story, that it was not just that they had marital issues because his wife found out about him kind of having these weird pseudo affairs with online girls, but that they, they were underage girls. Specifically one who the wife found out about when she was going through their phone bill, saw weird numbers that she didn't recognize, called it, and this 14 year old girl answered the phone. So this is the picture that the person is painting. That was hard to say. So this is what this person was alleging all the way back in 2017. Why does any of this matter? This is a random person on Facebook. It's weird and spurious. Lloyd, by the way, addressed this as soon as it happened, and he's addressed it a few times over the years. He always includes that Deanna doesn't know who this person is, and, you know, you could argue that he's just speaking on her behalf. We can't be sure that he's telling the truth, but that's all we had until recently. Because what happened on February 14th is his Twitter account tweeted out screenshots of emails from 2008 that at least purported to be legitimate emails between Lloyd Evans and this 14-year-old girl who goes by Becca. Now, the emails, contrary to the Facebook posts, are completely legible. There were some compelling things that I found to make the emails seem kind of legitimate, in addition to just the gut instinct that, boy, who would go through the trouble of writing 
you know, dialogue between two different people who each have a distinct tone of voice. Thing that was damning about these emails were that they seemed to corroborate the Marco post from 2017. These emails were the proof of what he was saying. This was the 14-year-old girl that Marco was alleging Lloyd groomed and sexted on the internet and in fact had an encounter with in real life. And again, I was gonna go into all the little interesting theories about why they're real and why they're not real, but again, Lloyd's wife made a statement where she said she doesn't know who Marco is and those emails are fake. So there's no point in me speculating. And even though, thank God, we have this statement saying that this didn't happen, you know, his wife does not know Marco, these emails are not real. It's also not equally, but also fucked up that somebody would think to write all that stuff. You know, if the emails are fake, then somebody had to do creepy pedophilia slash fiction and gross, disturbing, rotten hell forever. Let me be very clear, now that I've said all this inflammatory stuff, I don't think that Kim and Mikey or the Vast Apostate Hour or any of these people made up any of this stuff. I don't think that they wrote the Marco post. I don't think they made like a shadow account on Facebook and put like a name of a guy and like posted a crazy story in a fake accent. I don't, that's, that's also very conspiratorial. And I don't think that any of them sat down at a computer and thought, aha, what we will do is we will write the most twisted, fucked up fan fiction of all time to sink this guy on YouTube. Let's be clear, there's no reason to think that any of them faked this stuff. I thought the emails were real. When I first saw them, I thought they were compelling and they had some issues, like they had, there was some pretty obvious concern. But even before Diana posted her statement, uh, I had confirmed from two separate people that know her that said for sure this stuff is fake. Three independent sources who don't talk to each other but all talk to Lloyd's wife say they're fake. And I think we have to be good with that, right? Like we have to admit if all the evidence is showing you that something isn't real and the person who's the subject of the emails, which is Lloyd's wife, is saying that it's not true, then why, why would we keep going down this rabbit hole? There's already some takes that, you know, Lloyd's wife didn't even write the statement and that she was either coerced to do so, that Lloyd wrote it, or that it was a prepared statement because, boy, is Lloyd threatening a lot of legal threats. Hi, FBI, watching this. And maybe that's true. Maybe the statement that she made isn't even real. But how could we possibly know that? And at this point, what are we willing to accept as convincing evidence. Like if she goes on YouTube and makes a statement and we can see her saying all the words, but well, we don't know that Lloyd isn't off camera with a gun or the legal team or the FBI that's right outside my apartment. So then you say, okay, well, we just have to get a big drone shot from the sky that we can see for like a mile around. That there's nobody in the honest way. And we can just, you know, we, we know that she's not being coerced, but then you think, well, maybe there's snipers and maybe there's a gun on the drone that's gonna get her if she doesn't say the prepared statement. You know, like it's all, so anyway, it doesn't matter what I think. The, the evidence that all points to everything being a bunch of garbage, but just because this weird fake stuff exists does not invalidate the first hour of this video where we recount all the real things that definitely happened and that we can document with evidence that we have screenshots of and video evidence of, like Lloyd, has some uh, issues, in my personal opinion, and maybe is not the most savory fellow on all uh, in, in all of his dealings. It's the feeling of being abused. For me, abuse, and I'm not talking about child sexual abuse, that's something completely different, but in its purest form, to abuse someone is to do something to them that they absolutely don't want you to do, that will have far-reaching implications on them and that can never be undone it can never be fixed it can you can never undo it and you're doing it to them anyway knowing knowing what the ramifications will be that if i had to condense the word abuse into like a definition that that would be my definition and that's how i feel 
So what do we have here? We have a man who cheated on his wife repeatedly every couple of months for the last three or four years. Two of those years being during COVID, by the way, so let's not even get to the ramifications and implications of that. He got caught, he told his friends about it, and his friends thought, yikes, you know, he is our friend and he's going through a crisis, so we're gonna stick by him until he, you know, kind of gets over it and has his break and his vacation, and then we're gonna bounce. But, you know, the more they thought about it, the more they processed the information, they thought, you know, this stuff about Thailand is pretty creepy, and I am a little concerned that he has all these patrons funding him, and they have no idea that he's harming his wife, who is beloved by his subscribers. You know, Diana is an important part of the channel. She's been on many videos. She's told her story. She will give her perspective sometimes on either being a parent or being a woman in the organization. Everybody knows and loves her, and the patrons love her too. Wouldn't you want to know if you were directly funding a guy's cheatery and sexual escapades like yikes and you can go through all the weird mental gymnastics of like well he also gets money from like book sales and from ad revenue and that's not stuff that i'm directly paying for so it's not like he's definitely using my dollars to hand it to the prostitutes and it's like isn't the point just that it's tacky, just that nobody wants to think that their favorite YouTuber who's helping them through crises that involve sexual impropriety and sexual abuse a lot of times is involved in some shady, not so great stuff and is lying about it and you know, got, had to get caught by his wife before he even admitted to all this stuff. This is the, um, the mindset, unfortunately, that I've, I've been up against from the very beginning is that if you don't meet the expectations of certain XJWs and you don't fulfill their their needs or requests or you don't agree with them in some way or you disappoint them in some way, it's not just a case of, oh, well, you go your way, I'll go mine. Let's agree to disagree. It's, I'm going to destroy you. This is a big thing that I think Lloyd misses in all of this stuff. He doesn't get that... He just looks really shitty in all of this. And it doesn't matter whether or not somebody betrayed his trust and this is a private matter. Like, he did bad things that everybody can agree are harmful to a marriage, that are harmful to a family. So Lloyd is going on and on about how this is a personal violation of his trust and how dare Kim out him and say these things are his private business. And... Maybe I'm being uncharitable, but I don't think that the guy who cheated on his wife demanding that that information not get out there is the most unbiased source of information about uh, whether or not people deserve to know that. Oh, the guy who cheated on his wife and lied about it until he got caught and it went on for years and years. He doesn't want that info out there. He thinks that should be private. Oh. Well, we should 100% not double think any of that. That's, he said that it's private and that's the law. It is mandated in the bylaws of humankind that if a dude who cheats on his wife tells you not to tell anyone about it, you can't ever, not your business. Even in situations where I think he's right, he goes about it in the worst possible way. Like, I agreed with him earlier on the video that people shouldn't be expected to make all of their Patreon donations clear to their subscribers. It is common practice, it's something that I'm gonna start doing, but, it, you know, it, I don't think you should have to do it. It is your money, you should be able to spend it. But Lloyd compares himself to a doctor. Would a, would you expect a doctor to tell you what he's doing with all his money? And like, buddy, you're making videos on YouTube that a lot of times have like parody songs in them and have like jokes about how Toni Morris' drug is not, it's not high art that we're going for here, right? Even the fact that he calls his work activism has come under fire a lot over the years, not because he accepts money, but because like, is that what activism is? Is activism making content on YouTube? 
this is a question that I, I actually don't know the answer to. Um, I like a lot of political streamers, and I think that that's really important because those streamers can get across ideas and appeal to young people. A lot of those streamers consider themselves activists. They're not on the ground organizing, they're not necessarily knocking on doors, getting people to vote, but they are motivating people to vote in their own way. Is that activism? Well, there's debate in the community about whether or not that counts as activism. But I tell you what these guys don't do, is they don't constantly talk about, in very serious, solemn tones, often with an accusatory tone of voice about their important work, that anybody who criticizes them is trying to tear down their legacy of their crucial activism work that they've done over the years. Lloyd talks about his activism work and defines it as activism work all the time. And, you know, maybe it is activism, but, the, like, the point is, it's a little tacky to just constantly go on and on about how you're doing activism. Like, isn't it just a little tacky to constantly be going on and on about how charitable you are and how you're doing this important activism work? Like, I don't hear doctors constantly going like, well, as a physician who's doing important medical work, what Lloyd doesn't seem to get is how he comes across to other people. And when people point out how he comes across to other people, all he does is kick and scream and tell them, no, 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 I don't come across like that. You're attacking me. You're defaming me. This is slander, libelous even. You have a documented history of being overly defensive when people disagree. I've seen it multiple times. And again, I wasn't just referring to a tweet. I was speaking up to your past comments on protests. Keep up. I'm not the only person who has noticed your sometimes condescending tone. Having slammed me for not tweeting as you commanded me to tweet, you're now sliding into full-blown character assassination. I hope you find your anti seeders social media crusade meaningful, but I can't indulge you any further. Take care. A lot of rent it for themselves. You just can't trust anyone anymore. YouTube fame, patron monies, I know a lot of them don't actually care. Anyone who covers up child abuse should have their nuts cut off in my opinion. If you include me in this vague rebuke, then quite frankly, screw you, I care passionately and couldn't do the soul-destroying work I do on CSA if I didn't. Um, it, worth noting, as a side point, this person did not name Lloyd at all, so he was searching his own name on Twitter. Nice bit of backstabbing there, partner. I withdraw from appearing on your channel. Oh wait, that's the DM he sent me. Like, I'm not kidding. This this could have been an hour and a half video just showing Lloyd's Reddit posts and tweets and Facebook posts because it is all the time and honestly not just those he does it in his videos all the time and a lot of the time i i think that he is kind of right a little bit like he kind of has a point that maybe someone's being a little unfair or being a little rude to him but he goes off like ten thousand percent but wouldn't you know it uh, it's Lloyd, the person with the largest platform in the xjw community who has over a hundred thousand subscribers I, I don't know how this happened guys i don't know how we let something it's terrible happened, but he is the one being silenced. He's the one being bullied. I'm being silenced, he yelled into his microphone as it went out to an audience of 103,000 people. Lloyd, over the years, has accused a lot of people of bullying. Bullying is bad. Cyberbullying is really bad. And I do think that this tends to happen a lot more in niche, marginalized communities. And even though, you know, we're not like the LGBTQ community or the, the trans community, but the XJW scene is, like I said at the beginning of the video, it's a niche within a niche within a niche. It is a very small, insular, marginalized community. We don't get a lot of representation. We, you know, it, it's hard to get people talking about this kind of weird fringe religion, right? So to someone like Lloyd, even though he's seeing on Twitter a post that gets like three likes, to his 300 likes, it still feels like a personal attack because it's a small community. I understand where he's coming from, but as the person with the largest platform, shouldn't you be the one to like set the example and not always for sure escalate things a thousand percent? Every one of these controversies that's popped up over the years could have just been solved with him saying, I'm really sorry, I messed up and I'm gonna try and make it right. I know that you guys don't have to forgive me, and you know, I and I have patrons, and I'm really sorry that I let you down. I understand that you're putting money into the channel, so I'm really sorry. I'm gonna try and do better. And uh, end of statement, no, no justifications. 
There's no accusations. No, the real enemy is the person who told on me. I've noticed that a lot of the bullying that is being done to Lloyd is people simply gently suggesting that perhaps he occasionally doesn't take criticism very well. So we have somebody who got caught and instead of simply apologizing, sort of in a mealy mouth way, apologized to his wife, but made sure that everybody knew that the real villains of this whole thing are Kim and producer Bob. They're backstabbers. Here, let me read you the text that they sent me and show you how they used to be nice to me. And then suddenly, when they thought about the things I did and reflected on my character, they thought maybe that I wasn't such a great guy and this is an outrage and I'm gonna look great doing this. And what did Kim accuse him of? Well, she said that he was cheating on his wife for a number of years with prostitutes. True, Lloyd admitted to it. She said that he was using donated funds to do so. Lloyd did not directly admit to it, but so vehemently defends his right to do that, that one can reasonably assume that, yeah, absolutely he does that. She accused him of silencing people in the community over the years and stamping out criticism. Like, we've seen that a whole ton, but she's also said the people have quit activism over him, and you might be wondering, well, who? Who's doing? Well, to name a few, there's JW Victims, Not Your Vessel, BCG, Luis Good, Patricia from Uncultured, The Lethems, Christian and Katja. A lot of these people are women, interestingly enough. You'll notice, by the way, that Lloyd skipped right over that criticism during his live stream. You would be shocked at how many people have left activism because of him. Apparently, I'm a detriment to ex-Jehovah's Witness activism. I'm holding it back. Many times, Lloyd has shouted down other activists. I've never called out anyone by name. She called him a misogynist, and I guess that's open to interpretation. Lloyd admitted to all the things that she said he did, and the things he didn't admit to we have evidence that he 100% did those things. You know, Kim was not the one accusing him of grooming a 14-year-old girl. Kim's post was legit. Like, it was not a bunch of fake garbage, which is the way he's trying to spin it now. That much of the post was false, bad, fake information, fake news. Many people are saying that I have the best people, and Lloyd knows that he is the top voice in the community, and the community is divided over him specifically, and he could heal that divide by just saying that he's sorry. And he hasn't, and he won't. He's gonna come back and make videos and do his thing. And that's fine. He can do his thing. We're gonna do our thing, and maybe, you, after all this, you're just like, yeah, but I, I think he makes good videos. That is honestly completely fine. It's, we all have problematic faves. If you are able to separate the work from the person creating the work, then more power to you, I guess. <laughs> Lindsay Ellis has a really good video on the death of the author. Basically, the question of to what extent can we separate the art from the artist? What do we do when we learn that the dude who wrote Ender's Game was like a huge homophobe and a really terrible person in real life, but you read Ender's Game when you were in middle school and it's great. So what, what do you do? The answer is, only you can decide that. And if you are able to still enjoy his old content and maybe his new content when he gets around to making it, then that is fine. But Lloyd always says he doesn't have any problem with people being a Jehovah's Witness as long as they're fully informed. And now you are, you're fully informed. I know for me, Lloyd's videos were really helpful during my waking up process. I just would listen to his videos all day at work. I, I especially liked the broadcast rebuttals in his Taking on Tony series. And I tell you the reason why I like them is that they were entertaining. They were entertainment and they weren't really activism in the way that you normally think of it. They were funny. Lloyd was really good at taking down these guys in a succinct but funny way. The thing that's tough is that Lloyd is also the top advocate for survivors of child sex abuse. But now that we know that he went to Thailand and slept with prostitutes there, seemingly with the full knowledge that they had a big problem, but he thought to himself, ah, but real creeps go to Bangkok, so this isn't as bad as that, and I'm sure nobody will think it's weird. Should that be the guy out there advocating for victims of abuse, interviewing them on his channel? Like, I, I don't know, guys. I think that's a little tough for me. I'm just gonna have to 
pray and meditate on that. So the community is divided around Lloyd, and it sucks that he is not helping heal that divide by threatening legal action against people who, I don't know, say kinda mean stuff about him on Twitter? Send your timestamps of my video to him with the with evidence in the title, and that'll just that'll go straight to the Croatian coppers. The most irritating thing about this entire drama has been listening to people saying this is not our business. We shouldn't even be talking about this. This is this man's private life. This, this should not be open discussion. Yes, the man's private life was made public and now you know about it in your brain, but keep it there. Shut up. Don't stir up divisions in the congregation. I mean, the Twitter or something. We pride ourselves as XJWs as being the critical thinkers who now we get to have our own opinions and we get to voice our opinion and we can disagree with each other. We don't have to agree on everything. Isn't that great? But then when something like this happens, it turns out actually, if you don't agree, um, I'm gonna forward your tweet to the FBI. Well, he's done a lot of good work over the years. His important activism work, uh, it was important to me, and it was important to a lot of other people, but I just don't think I can go back and watch those videos again. For, for me personally, if you can, then more power to you. But a lot of people, after seeing his behavior amplified for what it is and what it has been ever since he's been on the internet, well, you know, it's just kind of soured me on the whole thing. And that's not me judging him as, like, some terrible, malicious human being. Like, I do know that he's a person. This is what he likes to say. is like, I'm a real person. You can't, you can't just treat me like one of your makeup YouTubers, Jake. But people make mistakes, and those mistakes, like, they, they have consequences. And this is the thing when people are screaming that they're being canceled. It's like, are you being canceled? Or are the consequences of your actions catching up to you? When you cheat on your significant other for years and years and lie about it, it's gonna bite you in the butt eventually and people are gonna know about it and you can't complain, I'm sorry, you don't get to be all whiny and complainy about people thinking that's not so good. So I hope this video is in some way helpful to like work through everything, track the journey that we've all been on. You know, it, like Kim has done more interviews, Lloyd has uh, said he's gonna be making more content, this is gonna be an ongoing saga, I'm sure there will be more weird anonymous Facebook posts, there might be more leaked emails, Hillary Clinton is Lloyd Evans guy. But one of the things that I have picked up after leaving the witnesses is that I don't like to keep my criticisms to myself anymore. That ate me up inside for years and years that I would have these feelings that something wasn't quite right, but I just had to stuff it down for the peace and unity of the congregation. And that's not to say I'm gonna be a huge dick and just start being mean to everybody, but when I think there is legitimate criticism of a thing or a person or an idea, then I'll talk about it in the battleground of ideas, which is what this channel is now gonna be named from now on. Lloyd, I, I think you should say you're sorry and, and be nice to people, and I wish that uh, you, you'd just kind of come out and try and be a, a little nicer. And uh, uh, now my camera's going out again. Oh,